Hello again gamers, we've got another hands on and review for you today. Um, another sometimes you title, because they're about the only publishers out there that are actually doing me a favour and giving me review codes. Um, so we've got The Deep Ones, or Deep Ones. Um, this is developed by Burp Games, and obviously published by sometimes you. Uh, was released cross format on the 11th of April 2018, so I'm a little bit behind on this one. Sorry. Um, so I'm not going to do my usual trick and read the blurb for the game, primarily because it, it's obvious that English is not the first language of the people that made this game. Um, the blurb is all over the shop. Uh, basically, the game is about a diver who gets his submarine wrecked by a big red octopus that you'll see in a moment. Um, I'll give you the features that they've listed for it. A compelling and philosophical storyline, which is the first point. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to completely disagree. Uh, there's nothing to it. What little I played of this, I mean, I'll admit, I only played about half an hour, but there was nothing to drive for a story. It's literally just walk forward and survive. They say they've got an unusual visual presentation of the game inspired by the Spectrum. That you can quite plainly see in front of you. It's really nice and simple. Classic arcade gameplay. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Um, now this bit, different genre entries. For example, shoot 'em up genre will make its way into the game at a certain point. I, unless they're talking about patching it, I didn't see that. And a peculiar soundtrack of calm but rhythmical synth sounds. Which, yeah, yeah, I'll give them that. Um, the soundtrack is probably the thing that I will rank this game the best on. Um, as you can see for now, um, this is your little intro sequence. So this is your little diver cleaning off his submarine. And here comes the big red octopus that I've already mentioned. Now I do like the fact that they make this thing look really glitchy. As you'll see as the camera pans down to him. I mean, look. It's fully creepy looking. And I love it. I, I think, for me personally, that little bit there. For me personally, that is the best bit of the whole half hour I had. So after your opening credits of your diver just falling down through the blackness with some fish... Um, you end up here, and this is your sort of starting point. Now, I was a little bit confused why it lets you jump up here, but then it won't let you jump any higher at that point. But nowhere else did I see anything where there was um, a block on your jump height. Now, obviously, it's a very slow moving game. Your jump physics feel very sluggish and heavy. Uh, but that I sort of attribute to the fact that obviously you're supposed to be quite deep underwater. Um, the sea urchin enemies there, or sea anemones, whatever you want to call them, they are quite easy to avoid, as you can see. Um, your health meter is up there in the top left, which is measured by three bubbles. So that's it, three hits, you're dead. Um, and it does quite tempt you with drops such as this to check out what's further down. Clearly not a clever idea. The checkpoints also look like little radios or rune stones or something like that. I also think this snap here where it switches to scale across this giant skeleton was a bit jarring. Um, I found it a little bit sort of, it, it took me out of, I don't want to use the word immersion because we're underwater, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> it sort of made me feel like it, there wasn't enough of a marker there like in newer games that there's a, a cutscene there. The transition though from this bit to the new area with the new music that was quite nice although this area is very dark. The plus side of hitting this darker area though is you finally get a weapon, the harpoon gun which as you will quickly realise is very slow to fire does make combat a little bit awkward.
Now I know I've already mentioned twitchy camera on the cutscene, but it gets a little bit twitchy on this dropping bit as well, which again makes me feel a little bit like the game was too much out of my control. And this is where I mentioned about combat, the slow attack speed that you have makes fighting enemies like that turtle quite difficult because at later points the turtles are firing as fast as you are and you get nowhere. Obviously jellyfish as you can see are indestructible and so are the um, sea urchins. And I'm going to call them urchins because an enemy is... Yeah, that word. <laughs> a little bit too annoying to try and say. Oh, look. Treasure. We might have finished the level. Oh, fuck. And this is the point where I sort of gave up. Um, I would like to play more of this game. It has me intrigued, like I've not deleted it as soon as I've finished filming this review video. Um, but because of the slow fire rate of the harpoon gun, I know, I know, it's a harpoon gun, it's not going to be lightning fast. Um, and the awkward pattern that these sharks come at you, I just... For me, I'd had enough. I'd got a good feel for the game, you know, I'd... I felt quite capable of talking about the graphics, simple but effective, the sound, which is very 80s, very old school, you know, it, it's good for the retro crowd, um, but it's not for me. This game is not for me. So before I go, I'm going to leave you with two quick little details. First of all, this will crop up after the Sometimes You logo, and I sat there for a full minute before I realised, dumbass, you need to press X. So make sure you press X. And lastly, the theme tune on the title screen. I can't help it, it might just be me. But you tell me that this doesn't sound like Heads Will Roll by the Yeah Yeah Yeahs. Google it, if, or YouTube it if you don't believe me. I'm not going to put the, uh, the reference out there myself any further than that. Because I don't want to land myself or the creators in any sort of copyright trouble. Anyway, thanks for tuning in folks. You take care and I will see you all soon.